Hello, I'm Squirrel. And I'm Rumble. And we are Cat Snacks and Video Games. Today we'll be talking about physical Xbox 360 games and specifically some of the exclusives they have to offer. This is part two. So grab your snack and let's get started. All right, let's just jump in here. I'll go first again, if that's cool with you. Yeah. All right, first one I have here is Kengo Legend of the Nine. This is a fighting hack and slash action game. So you basically just go around hacking and slashing guys. Uh, <laughs> it's developed by Genki and published by Majesco in 2007. So apparently this is a spiritual successor to the Bushido Blade series on PlayStation. Uh, have you heard of that series? I think that I have heard of that. That's why I think this looks a little bit familiar to me, but I've never actually seen this one get played before. Yeah, so I mean, it, it seems like kind of a random title for the 360 because all the other uh, previous installments uh, came out on PlayStation only. So uh, like I said, it's a little bit random. Um, and this is the fourth and last installment. So it's pretty much confirmed Microsoft killed off the series. So. Oh my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> no. But no. that's really cool though. Yes, yes. <laughs> that we have the last one. <laughs> yes. Um, all right, so I'm gonna read a little bit on the back here. Uh, so Kengo Legend of the Nine, even today, legends persist of the nine deadly samurai whose extraordinary abilities and feats of strength remain unmatched by modern swordsmen. These Kengo masters lived and died by the sword, carving out their place in history as courageous ancient warriors. This is the story of the legendary Kengo Nine, whose destinies were inevitably intertwined and laced with bloodshed. Wow. So yeah, so that's that game. Uh, this uh, is also not backwards compatible, uh, so you need a 360 to play this. And it was also a physical only release. That's really cool. I think that sounds like it'll be almost like a movie, like one of those cool old samurai movies. Yeah, it could be. Yeah. So, I mean, I watched a little bit of gameplay and it's interesting for sure. Yeah. That's awesome. All right. My first one is Blue Dragon. This is a turn-based JRPG developed by Mistwalker and Artoon. It was published by Microsoft in Japan first in 2006 then released everywhere else in 2007. Um, this, it is based on uh, the design by Final Fantasy series creator Hironobu Sakaguchi, and uh, the art was by Ikira Toriyama, who is famous for their Dragon Ball character designs and from the Dragon Quest series as well. Um, this is uh, the first game on Xbox 360 to utilize multiple discs, and it spans over three discs total. As we can see here, it's yeah, got that's the... that's. I didn't know that actually. It was the first game to do that, but those cases are kind of hard to come by now too. So if you don't have the original case, it is more difficult to find them for sure. Yeah, no, absolutely. I've seen that. So let's see. We'll continue reading the stories on the back. An epic adventure in a vast and mysterious world. Lead your friends on an amazing journey through an immense and visually stunning world. Empowered by shadow creatures, your party begins a bold adventure to reveal the truth about the evil Nene and save the world. And then also we can see here it's a famed music composer, Nobuo Yamatsu, who does a lot of the, or maybe even all of the Final Fantasy music. So really like all-star cast that helped make this game. Yeah, they pulled in all the heavy hitters for this one, that sounds like so, but, and I mean, I, I do recognize that artwork being very Dragon Quest-like, so. Yeah, I love the Dragon Quest series, and that's why, I mean, I also love Final Fantasy series, so I super look forward to playing this one. I should have played it years ago. Yeah, so weird question, is that Dragon part of Dragon Quest, or is it just like a reimagining no. of something? No, totally different kind of a art style in that, in that sense of it's a different dragon. It's not like the Dragon Quest dragon okay. or anything <laughs> like that. Yeah, so no, it, it really is a standalone game for its own story. Yeah, so that's awesome. awesome. Yeah, yeah, I hope, I hope it's a good game. So, all right, next one I have here is uh, Dead or Alive Extreme 2. This is, I mean, kind of a weird one. Uh, it's like a sports game, a collection of mini party games and activities. I mean, does that sound pretty accurate? Yeah. Like, <laughs> like I haven't played this, but it's, uh, it's definitely an interesting one. Uh, so it was developed by Team Ninja, 
who also does Ninja Gaiden and uh, Dead or Alive, uh, and published by Koei Tecmo in 2006. So this is one of the earlier titles. Um, and uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's harder and harder to find this one as well. Like we haven't seen it many places. So These games often get pretty rare, I will say, yeah. Yeah, mm -hmm. and then there was a, a release on the original Xbox, the first one. Yep. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Okay, so let's check out whatever I can read on the back here, I guess. So, <laughs> DOA X2 takes things to another level of sinful enjoyment. So that was IGN. <laughs> so they were very excited about this game, apparently. Uh, so, <laughs> race around the island on an assortment of high-speed watercraft. Enhance your vacation with a variety of tropical island activities. Compete with other girls for fun and rewards and bump, set, and spike along the warm sandy beaches. So, <laughs> yeah, no, I, uh, it's one of those titles, I think, that if you do see it, then absolutely grab it. But, uh, yeah, it's... Uh, it's unique. It's unique, for sure, yeah. <laughs> I don't... I, I can guess the audience here, and, uh, and Skorol recommends to her husband, I guess. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> I just think that those games, they, they were such taboo for a yeah. long time but the funny thing about it when you do read the back or you know what the game what you're actually doing in the game you're like making friends and you're helping them with their makeup as well and you get to like change outfits and all this stuff if it had different art style it would reach a whole other demographic basically <laughs> yeah yeah so but you know i'll maybe i'll just test it out sometime and see it might not be my type of game but uh you know uh, i think it's, it'll it's be fun, fun to have in the collection it'll least. be fun those are always super rare games yeah, uh, they always go rare. Let's see. Next off, I have uh, Divinity 2, the Dragon Knight Saga. Uh, this is an action RPG developed by Larian Studios and published by Focus Entertainment in 2010 in Europe. And then it was later published for us over here in the US by Atlas in 2011. Uh, this game is a remastered version of 2009 Ego Draconis, which also includes the Flame of Vengeance expansion. And this comes game with the soundtrack comes too. With That's the cool, soundtrack yeah. as well. Um, and then I'm sure by now a lot of people know Larian Studios, famous for their Baldur's Gate uh, game that they just recently won a bunch of awards for. And it is a brilliant game. Also, Divinity is a fantastic series as well. So let's see. Um, I'm going to try to see if I can find the story. I guess this is more <laughs> just saying that, you know, see the Divinity 2 saga to its true ending in this incredible RPG compilation that includes both the remastered Ego Draconis and its sequel, Flames of Vengeance. As a Dragon Knight, you will explore the huge world of Rivalon and delve into the true nature of the age-old conflict between Dragon Slayers and Dragon Knights. So, yes. This one I look forward to. I played Divinity on the Xbox One. I have not played any of them on the 360 yet, but I absolutely love the Xbox One. Um, I think it's Original Sin. Uh, that was a fantastic game. Great co-op game. Yeah, yeah. And then uh, if we forgot to say uh, earlier, so Dead or Alive Extreme 2, this one is not backwards compatible and it was a physical only release. Oh, thank you. Yeah. yeah and then both Blue Dragon and Divinity 2 uh, are backwards compatible. So uh, yeah. apologies if you already said it, but I just wanted to make sure no, that no, thank you. we yeah. kept on track with our first video about this as well. Yeah, no, that's really helpful. Because mm -hmm. the, the good thing about Divinity 2 is that the, the first one, they didn't make it backwards compatible. So this is like a more complete package yeah. and you get to play it on newer consoles. So that, that that's, was great. That's even better. Yep. Yeah. Cool. Um, all right. My next one is Otomedia's Excellent. This is a side-scrolling shmup. Yep. So I got to your shmup, so <laughs> shoot him up. Uh, it's developed by and published by Konami in uh, 2011. And this was released in Japan first the same year. So it came out uh, everywhere else the same year, but just a little bit after Japan. Uh, so this is a sequel to Ultimedia's Gorgeous from 2008, which was only released in Japan uh, on the 360. Uh, and as I said on the front, I'll go back to the front. It's inspired by the Gradius series. So uh, that's, I don't know if it's the original creator was part of this process or, uh, or not, but uh, but on the back here, <laughs> we oh see, it's time to shoot the core. Up to three player simultaneous play 
eight explosive levels, upgraded option controls, adds strategy and depth. So we were talking about doing this one in co-op and trying. I didn't know it was a three player co-op. I didn't know co -op. it was three either. That's yeah. cool. <laughs> so I would assume this is local. Um, yeah, I think it is local, but it could be online as well. But uh, yeah, we'll definitely try this one out. And just like the other ones that I've done, this is also not backwards compatible. So, but it'd be cool to check this one out. Yeah, uh, absolutely. I think that one looks like fun. And I one thing that I found interesting about that game is I never saw this game in the US for at least the longest time. Yeah. But then for some reason, when we went to Canada, we saw this game in everywhere. so many yeah. stores. So <laughs> apparently they only sold it in Canada and Japan and not in the United States. Yeah, yeah so, was, but no, you're absolutely right. Yeah, it was took us a long time to find it and um, yeah. Yeah, it was one of those games where when I saw it on the shelf, I go, I've never even seen that game yeah, before. Yeah, because you know, we prefer, and we probably haven't said that, we prefer to find it in stores rather yeah. than ordering online. Because it's Absolutely. just that, that feeling of finding that game you've been looking for is, is uh, next to none, you know, so. And getting to pick the quality as well. That's so. true, yeah. <laughs> you get to see if the case is good, the artwork, the manual, yeah, for sure. So let's see, my next one is, Beautiful Katamari action puzzle game. Uh, this was developed by Now Production and published by Bandai Namco in 2007. Um, interestingly enough, this was originally scheduled for a PS3 release in addition to the Xbox 360, but development was abandoned, so it became a 360 exclusive. Um, all previous Katamari games had been exclusive to the PlayStation only, so that is what made this one so interesting to me because I love the Katamari series. And I, yeah, this is one that I haven't played yet. I'm looking forward to playing it. We've owned it for a while now and it's time. Yeah, it's, yeah. Let me see, read the back. Um, I, yeah, the Katamari series has the silliest storyline. So the prince and the king have finally arrived on the Xbox 360 video game and entertainment system. Once again, the king of all cosmos is in a dilemma, and it is up to the prince and the cousins to restore harmony. Roll up everything and anything you can get your hands on to create the biggest clump of randomness. It's chaotic. It's crazy. It's beautiful Katamari. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I love these games. They're so fun, so random, and great stories, if you can call it a story, but they try to make it a story. That one is backwards compatible, thankfully. So if you want to pick it up, you can even on your future, on your current, your future Xboxes. Your, your future, Xboxes. I mean, some people might not have a new Xbox. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, future, yes, <laughs> current, you can play yeah. it. So, But um, I recently found out too, which is kind of sad, but yeah, the game and the DLC was delisted from the store. So uh, you can only get this physically now. Aww. So yeah, uh, but I was going to ask you about that too. Do you think that that became more popular because it became an Xbox 360 exclusive? I mean, most likely if that's the only way you can play it and it's the only, so that would be the only one on the Xbox console except mm -hmm. for now the digital versions that have come to like Xbox One, yeah. Series X. I know they did remakes of the yeah, two have... older ones recently and whatnot, but that would be like a standalone 360 game. That's awesome. Yeah, yeah, because mm -hmm. I, I can imagine that being a one of those, hey, we lucked out here, you know, then we have it on you know, 360 in a sense, but yeah, that's, uh, I think both of our stacks today have some weird ones like that. And very colorful, I'm noticing. Yes, yes, that's, <laughs> that's true, yep. Okay, moving on to my next one here, and that's, oddly enough, a game that's been talked about quite a bit this year, uh, and that's Infernal Hell's Vengeance, or like a lot of eBay listings like to say, Hell's Revengeance, or Revenge. whatever, Hell's Revenge, <laughs> yeah. Uh, so they're not quite up to date on the title, I guess, but, uh, so this is a third person shooter developed by Metropolis and published by Play Logic in 2009, two companies I, I had not heard about, uh, before I bought this game. Yeah. Um, thankfully we bought this years ago, so we're not going into the pricing wars here. Yeah. Um, so the interesting thing about this is this is actually a port from a PC game called Infernal. So I'm not quite sure if they added more stuff to it on the console uh, version, but uh, the PC version was released in 2007. And I think around the time there were a lot of very popular third person shooters. So they probably saw we're gonna um, release this on console and kind of see how it goes, I guess. But um, all right, looking at the back here, 
uh, it says, step into the shoes of Ryan Lennox in this stunning third person shooter. Lennox, a former Etherlite spy now seeking revenge. So uh, yeah, utilize a range of modern weapon, re weaponry, including explosives and gadgets, and engage in hand-to-hand -hand combat with intelligent enemy AI. So there's some supernatural powers in here as well. So uh, I don't know much else about this game, but you know I I'll get to it eventually. Um, and just like every other game I've talked about in this little mini series here, like this is not backwards compatible either. So and it's physical only as well. So uh, yeah. So uh, we'll you took see. that exclusivity up another notch, I think. <laughs> I guess so. Yeah. <laughs> no, it's just it's interesting to see that it was a PC game, and then they just like, hey, let's put this on consoles and see what happens. I guess. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. It's funny that that game suddenly has gotten more talked about. I had never heard of this game until recently. <laughs> no, I mean it's uh, like I talked to friends in the past about you know this game, and then. I picked it up, but yeah, that it suddenly resurfaced, yeah. like it's some, uh, you know, I don't think anyone says it's a classic or anything, but it's one of those physical uh, copies, at least, that are probably harder to find now. Yeah, well, you'll have to try it out. <laughs> yeah. My next one is Star Ocean, The Last Hope. This is a action RPG developed by Triace and published by Square Enix in 2009. Uh, this one was more of a timed exclusive on the Xbox 360, as you'll learn soon. Uh, the fourth installment in the series, it features a battle system with four party members and is more team oriented. Um, there was an international version of the game that was released on the PS3 in 2010. And let's see, I love the Star Ocean series and I haven't played this one yet. So it has a new breed of Hero Arises. Earth has been decimated by World War III, and now humanity must turn to the stars in search of a new home. Explore the galaxy on your quest. Make allies and enemies among the alien races you encounter, and uncover a threat so great it threatens all creation. Real-time battle, spectacular visual, and a universe of adventure and danger await in the great star ocean. Ooh, intrigue. <laughs> <laughs> and this one has one of those ca cases too, the three disc uh, cases. Here. Yes, yeah. it does. And that one, uh, that game is backwards compatible and apparently is close to a 700 hour completion. Whoa. So I'm going to have to start now. Yeah, <laughs> we'll be done sometime <laughs> next year. Yeah. I'll see you next year. 700 hours. Like, do you know how many games you can play in 700 hours? But yeah, I know some people like to invest a lot of time in a game. Like I totally get it. Like I have friends who spent like 500 hours on Fallout and yeah. you know, all that stuff. So yeah, it, it's, I get it, but that, that's a lot of that's hours. Intense. I mean, I play RPGs. I know they're long games, but 700 hours. When I saw that, I was like, wow, that's an investment. Yeah. But you know what? Maybe that's just like multiple playthroughs or it might be, you know, something something a little bit harder to get through. Whereas if you just want to do one playthrough, maybe that's more of a 30 to 50 hour kind of experience. Yeah, so. yeah. And then when it comes to achievements, too, it could be like a grindy, yes. long achievement that they added just to get people to play it longer. I so. know Star Ocean has that. So. Yeah, yeah, it's <laughs> most likely something like that. So, Okay, I'm moving on to my final one here. And that is Ninja Gaiden 2. Uh, this is an action adventure hack and slash developed by Team Ninja and published by Microsoft in 2008. Uh, so it's kind of similar to your Star Ocean there that you just talked about. This was kind of a remastered port. Uh, there was a remastered port for the PS3 in two th 2009 called Ninja Gaiden Sigma 2. Uh, so they, and also PlayStation did the same uh, with uh, the first Ninja Gaiden game where they did a Sigma uh, remaster as well there on PS3. Um, so I don't know, I'm almost thinking that uh, maybe uh, PlayStation was a little bit bitter about this when they're like, hey, we're gonna one up Microsoft and get <laughs> like a better version of it. So I'm sure PlayStation fans, if uh, anyone's watching this, will probably say that <laughs> it's a better version. But uh, either way, uh, this version has a pretty cool slip cover. Yeah. So uh, don't, you know, we don't have many games with the slip cover variant here. But uh, looking on the inside, yeah, it's complete. And uh, going to the back here, 
if I can read, I'm not going to read the top part there because I can't see what it says, but <laughs> so it says, in this action-packed sequel to Ninja Gaiden, you are Ryo Hayabusa, the ultimate ninja action hero. Destroy everything in your path as you embark on a quest to avenge your clan and prevent destruction of the human race from a brutal and relentless enemy. Armed with special moves, deadly weapons, and the ruthlessness of a ninja, you shall leave, you shall leave a wake of death in the name of honor. Whoa. Yeah, so that's intense, but I've heard these are uh, very tough games too. So, but I have not played, I, I tried the first Ninja Gaiden and Ninja Gaiden Black on the original Xbox, but I haven't played through, but I, I really should get into this. This is like very uh, well, you know, well uh, received series and stuff. So, um, but yeah. uh, what's exciting for me is out of all of the games that I've talked about, mm -hmm. this one is finally backwards compatible. So Ooh. that's, and it has some DLC as well that you can <laughs> still buy. So yeah, it's pretty exciting for me because out of all the games, that's the only backwards compatible one I had. That's funny. Yeah. Well, I mean, I don't think I've ever played a newer Ninja Gaiden. I probably played one of them on the NES. Uh, oh yeah, that's right. Yeah. <laughs> Which is probably very, very different. That's uh, probably side scrolling. Yes, yeah, yeah. Yes. yeah. <laughs> so that would be a cool to see. Okay, my last one is called Step Saga. It is a board game, card game, um, kind of a Monopoly game with a twist. And it was developed by Omiya Soft and published by Bandai Namco in 2008. This is uh, the first entry in the series on a, a Microsoft console and this game can be played in single player and has local and online multiplayer as well. And it's got beautiful art. This game has always caught my eye and I really meant to buy the version that came on the 3DS as well, but it got rare so fast I didn't <laughs> get a chance to. So I'm glad that we have this one. So unleash the power war ravages the land and you must stop it you have the ability to control powerful beasts and spells that are summoned by mystical cards use your cards and your wits to vanquish mighty enemies called sub saga takes you on an adventure that combines the luck and strategy of a board game with the depth of a collectible card game in a vivid environment this one sounds really fun and sounds like something different and unique. And that's what I love about the Call Sub Saga. They do their own thing that is, yeah, unique, fun, and great art style. That does seem like a very unique game for the for the console, and let alone the yeah. 360. Yeah, so mm -hmm. I'm, I'm glad that you suggested buying this uh, when we did, because, mm -hmm. um, yeah, I, I don't see that one very often. No. And I know that's been pretty, uh, yeah, it's been talked about lately a lot, so. Yeah, yep. absolutely. It's cool. a hard one to find. So. Yeah, so we got through them all. We got through. We so this is kind of more of the more unknown titles, I would say, the exclusives that at least we have in our collection. Uh, and we haven't actually played uh, many yep. of these. We've tested some of them out, but uh, we haven't fully played them. So we're excited to get going on that. Absolutely. I can't wait. But that's it for today. So thank you so much for watching. And please comment, like, and subscribe. And we'll see you in the next one. Bye.